human person is composed of body and soul. So in order for it to be called a human person, both body and soul must be present. The soul animates the living thing or it is what makes a thing to be alive. In order for a human body to be alive, it needs a soul. So again, soul animates the living thing or animates the body and makes it alive. A corpse which is composed only of a human body, it does not have a soul, cannot be considered a human person. It is the body of a human person, but without the soul, the body is not alive. We often say that the body is here but the person we knew and talked to before is not here anymore. Our catechism teaches us that in the sacred scripture, the term soul often refers to human life or the entire human person. But the soul also refers to the innermost aspect of man that which is of greatest value in him, that by which he is most especially in God's image. Soul signifies the spiritual principle in man. The soul is also the form of the body. The soul is a form and a form makes a thing to be what it is. It is the source of substantial unity and coordinated activity. So the soul gives the body its form. And it also means that the whole soul is present in the whole body. It is not separate. And therefore the human person can be considered as an embodied soul or an embodied spirit. What is therefore the difference between a human person and animals? Since souls are the ones that make a thing alive and plants and animals are alive, therefore we can say that plants and animals also have souls. Animals have what we call sensory souls. Plants have what we call vegetative souls, while humans have rational souls. One major difference between animal souls, plant souls, and human souls is that both animals and plant souls, when they die, their souls also die. They do not survive when their souls are separated from their body. That is in contrast to the human souls which are able to survive when the human body dies. Before we mention our second difference, let us mention first that there are also similarities between human souls and animals and plant souls that is in terms of powers. Powers are tools used by the souls to interact with the environment. The souls interact also with the environment and powers are tools used by the souls to interact with the environment. We have vegetative powers that are common to plants, animals, and humans. 
Then we have the sensory powers that are common to animals and humans. The second major difference between animal souls and human souls are found in these powers. Rational souls have powers that are not present in animals and plants. The power of the will and the power of the intellect are present only in rational souls of human beings. Will is the power that inclines us to what is apprehended as good or fitting, while intellect refers to the faculty of understanding things and reasoning objectively that we use to seek the truth. So the will is the power that points us and leads us to the good, while intellect is the power that we use to seek out what is true. We recall in the Bible that Jesus mentioned that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He also mentioned that only God is good. And these powers of the will and the intellect who seek both good and truth respectively will lead us to God. According to Catechism, the Church teaches that every spiritual soul is created immediately by God. So our souls come from God. It is not produced by the parents and also that it is immortal, meaning it does not perish when it separates from the body at death. So the soul is immortal and it does not perish. The body dies but the soul is immortal. Since our soul does not perish, we have to be concerned with the afterlife. Our life in the spirit world when our souls separate from our body when we die. Because we do not want to spend our afterlife forever in hell. We want to spend our entire afterlife in heaven. And our afterlife is directly connected with our choices, the things that we do here while we are still on earth. It is also worth mentioning that there are many scientific studies that show that consciousness persists even after death. And this proves to us the existence of souls. And although our souls get separated from our body when we die, our soul will be reunited with our body at the final resurrection in the second coming of the Son of God. Now let's take a look at three Bible passages that talk about the soul. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their souls? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. Our third and final Bible verse comes from the letter of James, chapter 5, verse 20. Let us read. Let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. 
Before we end, I'd just like to inform you that we already have two YouTube channels. First, the original that you have already probably already known by now. And the second one is the Theology Explained for Beginners 2.0. And this is the new channel. And kindly visit also this channel and support our channel by subscribing and clicking on the notification bell and sharing this video. Thank you very much.